Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to grab topographic data from any point on Earth and uh, pull it into Fusion 360 for carving on a CNC machine. First step is to find some data that you like. So you'd go into earth.google.com and uh, just search for something that you're interested in. I found this uh, Yarra River over here and uh, I'm just going to zoom in close-ish to it and I'm going to take note of the coordinates for this region on earth. This is the longitude and the latitude. I'm going to copy and paste those into terrain to STL. You can use uh, another online service, this is the one that I find easiest to use and I've just popped in the latitude and the longitude directly from Google Earth and I'm going to um, center this red square over the data I want to capture and click generate model then download the model save it extract it and next step is to manipulate the data in Blender before we bring it into Fusion 360. Okay, so here we are in Blender. He has a blank file. I'm just going to delete these three items. So we've got a nice clean thing to start off with. And I'm going to insert, or I'm going to import the SDL that we just got from our program. And this is it over here. As you can see by the dimensions here, it's very, very big. It's 46 meters by 60 meters. So I'm just going to scale this down based on the material I'm going to be carving. So if you want to carve something very big, you will scale it to that dimension or something very small. For this um, project I'm just going to use a small piece of hardwood, a small piece of oak. So I'm just going to scale it down to by 0.002. I'm going to select the object, press S for scale, type 0.002, press enter and um, there it is. I'm happy with those dimensions. It matches the piece of wood and then I'm going to Go into edit mode by pressing tab. As you can see, the object is made up of thousands of triangles. Now Fusion 360 doesn't like a lot of triangles. If you go over 10,000 triangles, then uh, Fusion will crash generally. It doesn't like it. So the what we're going to be, do, be doing is converting these triangles into quads, which is something Fusion likes. Um, before we do that, I'm going to just get rid of these sides. Quickly. I might fast forward through that. I'm going to make sure that I'm selecting faces. I'm just going to highlight the sides and delete them. Okay, there we go. Now we're just left with the surface. Um, now we're going to turn these triangles into quads. You can do it through the menu, but the shortcut for that is Alt J. So I'm going to select all of it, press Alt J. And as you can see, it's turned into quads. There are a few triangles left, which is not a problem. Fusion will handle them. They're very, very few and far between. You could go and manually delete the triangles and turn them into quads, but it doesn't really make a difference. Now that we got our surface, I'm going to export this into an OBJ file. File export wavefront OBJ, and we'll put it into our STL3 folder, and let's just call it Topo. And uh, very important here when you export. Make sure that you select the selection only 
and we don't need to apply modifiers and we don't need to export materials. So we just want those few boxes selected, export OBJ, and now we move into Fusion. Inside Fusion, you're going to bring in our file, we'll say insert, a mesh, and we'll choose topo.obj, open it. It comes in on, a, on its side, so we just have to straighten it to the right position. And we will also move to ground and center it. Um, as you can see, it's on meter, which is correct. That's the same units that Blender was on. Just have to make sure you match whatever the Blender meet, the Blender unit type is. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to turn this into a solid object. And the way we do that is first we go to our form environment, right click, click convert, select quad mesh to T-splines, new body, okay. There it is. We will finish the form, clicking finish form. And now we are going to create a simple sketch, create sketch, we'll use the bottom plane over there. And uh, we're just going to draw a center rectangle and just make sure that it's within the envelope of our surface here. Um, so I'm in there within the envelope. It looks good to me. Finish sketch. I'm going to press E for extrude. I'm going to change direction to symmetric. And I'm going to extrude both directions. Make sure that I clear model. 15 is fine. Okay. Now we've got one solid body. And now we want to split this body. The way we do that is we'll go to the split body tool. Select the body to split, which is this whole body. And the splitting tool is going to be our surface. Okay. And now we have got a perfectly machinable solid surface that can be machined in the cam environment and output as G-code to the milling machine. Now that we're in the manufacturing environment, we will just create our tool pass and output as G-code to our CNC machine to mill this uh, object out. The first operation is roughing with the six more end mill. The second is a parallel tool path with a ball nose end mill. And uh, the third is cutting the part out with the 2D contour. And the very last operation is uh, done after I've poured some epoxy into this channel here to recreate the water for the river. It will be blocked off on this side with a, a piece of plastic that's pushed up against the side to stop the epoxy from overflowing. Once it's set, we'll come back with a 2D contour toolpath and just clean up that edge so we've got a nice uh, strong transition where the water stops um, on the edge of our model. So the rest of the footage is making it on the CNC machine and the step involved. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, if you have any questions please uh, ask them in the comments. Thank you.